Mike Gary. Welcome to the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast. I'm Buddy Pulley, joined solely this week by Buddy Pulley. Wait, uh, hey, boy. Yes. You are not Buddy Pulley. That's incorrect. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Did you not just realize that you said that? Not even a little bit. Um, okay. My, my Zoom says I'm Buddy Pulley. Okay, all right. We're doing this again. All right. Uh, I I am Buddy Pulley, um, and in case anyone, I know it's been a long time, it's been a whole week, but I just want to remind everyone out there, second still fucking sucks. <laughs> still fucking sucks, elephant cock. <laughs> like, fuck this. It do be that way sometimes. It's been a rough week, <laughs> or a rough uh, two weeks. Um, so anyway, um, hello, Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen. Yes. Um, a race I used to love a lot more than I do currently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously. So if you guys do not, uh, do have not listened to the show more than a year, um, we have harped on Watkins Glen for really ever since we've had the show. About the lack of track limits and how the guys really it takes a lot of the skill out of road course racing because guys can just blow the corner and it doesn't matter because they have 50 yards of runoff that they can, you know, just it, it takes all the technicality and all the or not technicality, all the technique and all the a lot of the skill out of road racing. Um, they actually made an effort to fix that. Um, so well, I guess I'll, what they did, they added, uh, if you guys have ever driven on a highway in America, I don't know if they have this in other, uh, other countries, but, uh, they, they have the sleepy lane where, it, or the chuck lane, as I like to call it, where, um, if you veer off the side of the road, it makes, uh, a loud noise <laughs> because you, you end up, uh, uh what i don't know there's like dimples or indentions in the road and they added those to the outsides of what just one and five or one and yeah outside of turn one and whatever turns out of the carry so i guess that's that's five yeah yeah technically they added that and then they made some changes to the curbing in the f- first curb into the bus stop um to kind of help the drivers because they were jumping over the curbs and it was apparently hurting their fragile bodies. Um, Seth, what did you, what did you think of the changes that were made and how they affected the racing products we saw this past Saturday or Sunday? Well, I don't think it was, I don't think it was enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, uh, oh, the French okay. Grand Prix, the French Grand Prix circuit is pretty much nailed how to do this, I think. Um, what's that called? I, I don't know. Okay. I All call right. it the America lane because it's red, white, and blue. Um, okay. All right. I'm joking, clearly. But um, I don't know what those are called, but they work and they're awesome and they need to be everywhere at Watkins Glen. Oh, you're talking about the the, the curbing, like the little or what? Like the outside, not in the curbs, but like just or not all the runoff. It's all that like bumpy shit, like oh, okay. stripe. I don't know. Uh, if you look I, at it, you'll know what it. You'll know what I'm talking about. But um, I think that needs to be in one and five, and yeah. I guess it just has to be in one and five. Everything else yeah. in Watkinsville has grass basically yeah so yeah i think that's what we need to do this was an attempt and i can appreciate an attempt but it's not clearly when we first showed up for the weekend um the i thought it was pretty a pretty piss poor attempt um because the they still you still had a lane a full like lane and a half off to the other side of the curbing that you could use that didn't have the indentions. And I was like, well, what the, I mean, 
that's that's dumb. Put it all the way up to the curb. You, you let's deter these guys from going there. Um, I think ultimately it did help. I, I I'm with you though. It's not enough. Um, our friend Cooked Virus actually had a great idea. Um, they they texted me or uh, twittered me the other day. Um, they were talking about super speedways and um uh, trying to help slow the cars down with super speedways but i think it would work here as well um the i think it was um i forget what track it was that they were talking about um hold on sorry let me pull it up um it was uh at paul ricard that's what it is um apparently that's exactly what i was talking about oh that's that you didn't know that was in france no, I had no clue. No, now I'll I know. be honest with you. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I did not know that. Okay. Uh, the what did bo- Cook Virus call it? They, I, like, they just, they said it was like an abrasive surface on the runoff area, in the runoff area. Okay. I feel better now okay. that I know that someone else didn't know what the hell it's called. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, and I, it makes sense. I mean, it, you know, guys wouldn't go out there if they're, I mean, you look at like a race like North Wilkesboro when, uh, before they repaved the whole track, they repaved the exit of, uh, pit or the apron. And you saw guys literally running the apron coming off a of turn two at North Wilkesboro to save tires because it was much more, uh, forgiving than the abrasive racetrack. And I think if you did something like that, even like I don't like I said I don't watch F one I don't know what what exactly it's called but like if you put an abrasive surface all the way out to the curb they wouldn't go out there simple as that like uh, so I don't know uh, the bus stop deal I don't know they made the corner easier apparently <laughs> not faster oh. well yeah well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what they did? They made it faster, which, and it's like, it's not as technical. Like, it's it's not as technical. Like, the bus stop yeah. used to be one of the most, the it was the spot at Watkins Glen. It was where the men were separated from the boys. And that's not the case anymore. You just barrel it off in there and, you know, I mean, you could send it in there 10 car lengths too deep and lose the race. <laughs> it, it's just, I don't know, man. I just... Like you said, Watkins Glen used to be such a good track, and it's. Um, I think this was a step in the right direction, but as we do it with most things in NASCAR, we we tiptoe up to everything, and then we do it, and then we're like, oh, that was too far, and then go back to where we were. It's typical. I love how NASCAR again just built the most rigid car humanly possible, mm-hmm. and then you know didn't fix that. You know, we're on year three of that. We'll not fix that. That's absurd. We could not possibly do that. But let's make sure we get rid of this curb here because the drivers are driving over it and it's faster, so they're all going to do it. But let's not, like, increase the size of the curb to where it's a detriment to get on the curb now. Let's just get rid of the curb. Yeah. Uh, Makes sense to me. Why it get, it goes back to it goes back to the basic premise of my issues with the track limit situation here is you need to make it faster to run the proper line on the racetrack. Yep. And that's yep. again, we got rid of it here. We did the same basic thing when we ran the Daytona road course back in 2020 and 21. The drivers, you know, obviously sports car guys have been running that course for years. No one ever had a problem with the backstretch chicane ever. NASCAR comes there one or two times and they can't not run in the grass. That's just, they couldn't do it. And then someone spun out. And then what did we do? We paved that part behind the curb. Well, yeah, because we couldn't, I don't know. But then of course we go to Coda and it's fine to run completely on the inside of the curb and cause the turn to become dirt. Which I guess I can't complain about because I won a dirt race back in the Cup Series. 
but one turn out of 37 at Coda is not exactly what I had in mind. So, yeah, I don't know. Everything we do in this series is asked backwards, and it's just another one of those examples. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We we managed to do road racing wrong a lot. Which a few years <laughs> ago was what I loved so much about it because well, it yeah, wasn't it wasn't the whole, you know, I had my my left pinky penis inside your right rear butt and that means that you oh. had to give me the spot or whatever. It what was the fuck? it was dude, you're blocking me. I'm going to push you out of the fucking way and now it's now it's you know, the break zone's like seven meters and you can't really make a pass. And Okay, all even right, the, listen. Even the new tires last hold on, hold on, till hold on, hold on, 40 wait, laps into a wait, run. You, you've, you've said quite a lot of questionable things. I don't know what's even worse, the, the pinky thing you just mentioned or the fact that you use meters. We have a New Zealand audience, buddy. I work in Look. millimeters at work. I haven't used a standard measurement, or a, sorry, an imperial measurement. I'm sorry, a freedom unit in a long time now at this what point. What the fuck is a kilometer? <laughs> uh, if you're not if you're not measuring corner distance by bald eagles per cookout, then I don't know. I don't know cookout. what you're talking about. Okay. Anyway, um. What I was gonna say is, it's funny that sh the Chicago Street Race is probably one of the best road races we have on the circuit, and there, you know, there's no runoff there. It's the <laughs> it's crazy how that works, insane. And how guess that what? Works. And guess what? All that like, all that you know, <laughs> natural attrition that people really want in NASCAR race. It happens. Guess what? Yeah. It happens. If you suck, you're going to wreck. Or if you're near Chase Briscoe, one of the other. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, the tires. There was obviously a big to-do made about the four seconds of fall-off that we saw in the first test, and then the two seconds of fall-off we saw in the second test. Which um, somehow led to them splitting the difference uh, and saying it was three. Yeah. Um, let's show of hands to everybody in the room. Um, who was surprised that uh, they dialed it right in and there was barely any fall off. I'm not in the same room as you, so. Okay. All this right. question wasn't direct. No, I'm kidding, of course. Um, yeah. Yes, this happens every single tire every test time. we do, which is why this whole, the tires still aren't taking rubber bristle thing makes me go, uh-huh, sure. Heard that one before. It's going to be warm next week. Warm-ish, warm enough. I think we're going to see what we saw last year. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. And then if it doesn't happen, look, I'm fine with being wrong. Uh, I said the spring race is going to suck. So I'm just going to say this one's going to suck. And then hopefully I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this happens every time. We have we have three, four cars go to a test. And guess what? The track doesn't rubber up as much. And yeah. the tires fall off more. And they're probably faster because everyone has clean air. So of course, the tires are going to fall off a little bit more. And then we go to the race and it's not like that. Yeah, I I feel like we are. I feel like I was a little harsh in that because it, there was fall off towards the end of the run. It was like Darlington. Laps. Yeah, exactly. It was like Darlington where you there's no fall off, no fall off, no fall off. And then boom, you fall off a cliff. And that's yeah. a lot of what it was here. And I mean, I don't I guess that's heat. I don't know if that's necessarily where I don't know. Um, <clears throat> they got a whatever that saturation point Denny Hamill was talking about is or yeah, whatever. That's a, that's a lot of science. I don't, um, here's, yeah. Saturation points, meters, you're, you're beyond my realm of intelligence. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. Turning this into a brown because, nose podcast. Yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't think this race was nearly as bad as, Last year's Watkins Glen race, I thought it was no. a lot. I thought it was a lot better. I thought when the tires did fall off a little bit, we actually, I thought it was actually a pretty entertaining race. Um, like, you know, Busher was able to, I mean, march through the field. So was Shane. So, I mean, that was, that was good to see. It, we made it in an effort to not be as negative on the show because we're negative a lot. As much as, we much as much publicized as the tire fall off was and how 
that didn't really come to fruition. We did at least make a step in the right direction. So that's good. Um, and I think we overall saw a better next gen race at Watkins Glen than we have the past two years. So I don't know. keep pushing, keep pushing. Maybe, maybe we'll, um, maybe we'll get there one day. Um, I'm glad Ty Gibbs has joined the horsepower brigade. Um, yes, yeah. officially. Uh, I'm sure he was already on it, but officially he's joined the, the, uh, the hype train Yeah, and we're here uh, for it. So yeah. he gets what it. You think of, yeah. He, he gets it. Yep. Uh, what'd you, uh, what'd you think about the overall race? I thought it was a mess in a lot of ways. And I'm kind of numb to it, but in a kind of just overall sick of it kind of way. Like, I really, I kind of want to see a boring race next week just because I'm over it in a lot of ways. Um, I don't know. I have a hard time accurately describe or how I have a hard time accurately assessing the race I just watched because it's so similar to a lot of the other races I've yeah. watched and it's all starting to feel like it's kind of all starting to feel like the Michael Bay Transformer series where it's all just, you know, bad, bad, yeah. bad. We got to Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it don't matter what happens the first 89 laps of the race because it's going to be a green, white checkered. And sometimes um, it's also that green white checker. It's going to have its own green white checkered, and yeah, luckily not this week. But yeah, um, yeah, our, our green white checkered should not have offsprings. <laughs> yeah, on I, I mean, dude, it's just yeah, it's insane how it's every week. It's every week. It is one thing, one little thing, one nutsack in the back of the field every week, <laughs> and so causing. And we're, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. We're setting up for what might have been a pretty good ending to the race. I mean, it was going to be a you know a a uh, obviously a story of whether SVG could catch Chris Busher or not. And I mean, that's that was going to be interesting because I think Shane could have gotten there, but you know that was all all for not. Um, there's. Uh, well, before we get into that, I guess we'll we'll tackle this whole uh, caution thing with the 99 that really screwed up the strategy for the one and the 16 originally. Um, so Daniel Suarez spins at the, with what, a couple laps to go in stage two, right? Yeah, I think and, it was three to go, coming to two to yeah, go. Yeah, and they wait approximately... Um, an hour and a half with Daniel Suarez sitting in the gravel trap that no one has ever pulled out of in their entire life and waits till Ross Chastain and SVG are about, uh, you know, 50 feet from the commitment line to throw the caution and completely try to ruin their race. Um, meanwhile, uh, several minutes before Daniel Suarez spun out, there is a full on race tire in the middle of pit road. And I don't know if you guys have watched any races this year in the past couple of years, but uh, that has always been a caution. That is like as dumb as it is, or maybe it's not dumb. I don't know what side of the fucking, what side of the fence you fall under, but like, it's always been a caution. They have been consistent about that. And now it's not. I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> it did take us 35 or 40 seconds to throw one for one sitting on the track last year. So, oh, yeah, I guess it's not I mean, as bad as that. Yeah. I mean, why do we have draft? Why do we have gravel straps? Uh, so they don't wreck if they blow their brakes out and hit. So they don't hit the wall so fucking hard. Oh, OK. So why do we only care if that happens in turn six and not the and not turn one? You're asking the wrong guy. I don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, we used to have we used to have them in turn one. If we're why do we have like what like I probably because the brakes going out is such a rare occurrence these days would be my guess. I don't agree with it, but that would be my guess. I I don't again why it's in six and not one. I don't understand. But exactly. 
Like, I mean, there's just so many questions as to why why this happened. Why and not did... in the carousel? Like guys wreck oh. hard in the carousel. Oh yeah, fairly often. Which I I can almost get the get the carousel just because we mean coming out of the carousel. No, or... I mean more like the entry because if you were no, to well, you're not going as fast. Well, that's assuming you made the bus stop. But if you if you did blow the brakes or lose the brakes in the bus stop or coming into the bus stop, you would be going in there with a head of steam, which is why the bus stop exists to begin with. So I I don't know. I think it should be. I don't think the banking should drop off like it is, like it does there. But some Florence shit. Some very Florence shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That was I, just... that's a different that's a different topic. Yeah. But anyway, I, I'm just I'm frustrated because it's like we've always heard the argument of we don't want to we we don't we want the cycle to play through. We want the cycle to play through. And here you go. You didn't throw a yellow for the tire. Okay, well, okay, you've already, you know, gone against, I guess, going against your, your, uh, your adage, but then also going with it, because you don't want to throw the yellow in the middle of the cycle, but you're not throwing a yellow for the caution, but then... You know what you could do? What? Not close the pits when the caution comes out. There's no reason for that, other than NASCAR wants to keep things closer. Like, there's no competitive reason to throw the caution or throw the close the pit lane when the caution comes out none pit road is not suddenly more dangerous when the caution comes out unless there is a car blocking the pit lane it 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 is an advantage though it can be an advantage but i'm not i'm saying there's no it's an advantage. No, because if, 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 well, then SC- that's the way it happened. It's also an advantage to pit before, right before the caution comes out if you see a car stranded and you just happen to get there in time. So, them holding the caution or not holding the caution, which apparently is kind of a wishy washy thing with NASCAR. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother debate, but like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it was really dumb. It was just all really, it was a really dumb sequence of events that ended up not mattering too much, but it was just like, you almost fucked these guys race. Just literally like you've waited this long for Daniel Swartz to, for Daniel Swartz to get out of the gravel trap. Why not wait five more seconds? So you, you can complete the cycle that you care that you preach about how caring so much about. I don't know. The real reason is that they're not playoff care cars, so they don't really care about them. Oh shit. That's You're the right. real reason. Fuck. Um, all right. Well, okay. I guess now why fair. they waited until the moment before they pitted seems a little yeah. vitriolic. I don't know if that's the right word. I mean, you could have saved your playoff car if Daniel Suarez a lap by throwing it sooner. Oh, I hate to break it to you. I don't think they care about him either. <laughs> okay. Well, they just don't want it. They don't want the look of, hey, we waited until a playoff car got 50 feet from the line and then we threw the caution. I guess. I think they think that's a bad look. I mean, I don't know what NASCAR thinks a bad look anymore because they do a lot of things that are bad looks. I don't know. I was pretty convinced there for a minute that they, did, they just didn't want SVG to win the race. I doubt that. Like, I, I, I don't know. They threw a lot of questionable things at that team, particularly, um, that really, that really made me question, but we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll get there. Um, yeah. Uh, playoff attrition. We saw, um, a lot of playoff guys have trouble. Um, I think like 10, I think was the number or something along those lines. Uh, Denny Hamlin, um, wrecked what twice? He wrecked twice. Um, okay, all right. We debated his strategy from Atlanta last week. He's only six points below the cut line, and he's the first car out going into Bristol. He makes it. Okay, I I also think he think he makes it. Um, mostly because he wins. I um do we uh 
do we think any different of that strategy from last week, judging by what happened? I already, I said last week I didn't like it. Yeah. So I no, still, I don't think any different. Of okay. All right. So we both don't think any different of it. Cause I, I still think it was a, I think it was still a fair play. I think it was still a fair play. Um, I just think that they just, I just, you could have easily gotten, and by, I mean, easily, not that it's easy, but Danny Hamlin's good at super speedway racing. I think he could have easily gotten 14 or 15 stage points last week. And here he is plus eight instead of minus six yeah i uh i don't know i like i said last week i think um if there's a big wreck at the end and he misses it and gains 10 spots and ends up finishing 12th i think that he looks like a genius and if he doesn't wreck at the Glen, he looks like a genius but it, it's all circumstantial so it's it's kind of damned if you do damn you if you don't situation he got very lucky that he got in two crashes that did not end his day which uh, is something that can't be said for uh, Ryan Blaney, who uh, wrecked it, who was also involved in the lap one crash, which was caused by none other than doo-doo water himself, Corey LaJoy. <laughs> he do be that doo-doo water. <laughs> he wrecked the fuck out of Kyle Bush again. Never mind. I was going to say, maybe we figured out who's driving the seven car next year. I was kidding. No. Um, <laughs> It just, I can see yeah. Corey doing that, though. It's like, if you wreck him a third or fourth time, I'll be like... Mm. My favorite part of this entire race was at the point where they talked about all three Spire cars are in the top ten. And, oh, by the way, Corey LaJoy is third, and he still wasn't the highest running Spire car. <laughs> um, so, shout out to that. Um, back to Ryan Boydy. He made a big to-do about um, him getting towed back to the pits and not getting a chance to work on it. Um uh, does does uh, I feel like the defending champion should know the rules. Well, how many guys ran through the bus stop on Saturday? Under caution. I mean that's fair, but that, I mean I don't yeah. think anyone knows the rules. I mean that's true. I I, I think the listening... rule I think the NASCAR rule book is actually a figment of our imagination. I don't think it's okay. real. Okay. I mean, they definitely used to be real. I've seen well, a couple on eBay. Here's the one question I have. So he couldn't get it fired. He had, well, he said he couldn't roll it. He didn't yeah. say he couldn't get it fired. So wait, what? We made that whole big ado about the <laughs> air jack thingy mabobbers to get the car off the ground so he can drive it. Well, he couldn't get it rolling because he was broken, not because the tires were flat. Okay. So that's what I was wondering because he mentioned yeah. not being able to roll it. Okay, so yeah. he was just Ryan Blaney being Ryan Blaney. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that is that is a con that is a rule that is irrefutable. Like that's a rule that's point blank the rule. If you can't drive it back, you're you're out. You're done. That's how it's been ever since we implemented the clock. Now we can argue whether or not the rule's worth the damn. I don't agree. I mean, but, yeah, I mean it's but it is the rule. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. the if his argument, yeah, I don't know. If, if his argument was it, they should they need to change that rule, yes. But the argument was they didn't give me a chance to work on it. It's like, all right, well, you know, champion, we don't have champions provisionals anymore, or champions pri privilege. We don't, <laughs> you're done, dude. It's little, over. Little story for the audience. I was having a family get together and watch. Only started watching the race on lap like five or seven. So well after this incident occurred. Um, and my brother, who is a Ryan Blaney fan, goes, where's Ryan at? And we waited and waited and waited. And then I finally said, last. And he's like, he's pretty upset by that. Yeah. He's like, how I long has the race been going on? I said, eight laps. He's like, what the fuck? What's funny is I was at, uh, I was at um, uh, our buddy Tyler's house. And his his wife's a Ryan Blaney fan, and she was just out and doing stuff around the house. She's like, I'm gonna come watch the race for a little bit. And this is like lap like three. <laughs> and he goes, Well, Ryan Blaney just he's out already. And she goes, Never mind. <laughs> um Poor yeah. Hannah. Shout out to Hannah and Tyler. Yeah, good people, good people. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I got a real like real big brain idea for Ryan Blaney. Don't run into the back of Brad Bar Kozlowski, and then you can continue racing. 
Uh, hypothetically, yeah. Um, yeah. If I think the known that's... terrorist Corey LaJoy didn't cause accidents every week, then, you know. Shout out to Moonhead. Did he say that? Osama bin LaJoy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Who else? Wrong uh... time of the year for that one. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Um, let's see who else had trouble. Uh, Harrison Burton blew a tire um, at the most inopportune time. Um, glad he's in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, big thumbs up to that. Uh, Martin Truex did Martin Truex things. He's minus 14. Um, Brad Kozlowski, um, him and William Byron had a fun, had a fun little fun time there um yeah i'm lacking an understanding of how the six car was allowed to finish the race that feels a little unsafe to me what do you mean i mean he had a big hole in the left rear c panel tape it up let it rip baby but they didn't tape it up did they oh i have no clue <laughs> anyway i mean yeah. it's probably fine but yeah. it also seems like a slippery slope yeah i don't know joey Logano got a bunch of clag on his tire and uh turn Brad Kozlowski into William Byron and we take 95 minutes per caution it will never I will never understand why we didn't clean up the S's well we did after that one after that one yeah not uh, before yeah, that one yeah <laughs> William Byron got sent through the air and <laughs> toes collide <laughs> you know um and uh yeah William Byron likes feet <laughs> allegedly that's all i gotta say about that wreck it's my expert analysis of that that incident <laughs> um yeah uh let's see tyler reddick spun out um because chase briscoe's the greatest race car driver in the fucking world um i think that was him right um then he sent it in there under suarez and then yes that's exactly what happened yes yeah, uh, and spawn Tyler Reddick. Um, it was before or after the incident Kyle Larson kind of caused. Kyle Larson calls? I don't even really remember Kyle Larson calls in a wreck. He was trying... He was like 99% clear of Todd Gillen going up the S's at one point. And then Todd got in the grass because of it and caused a several car accidents. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Kyle Larson did cause that. Um, but also yeah. Todd needs a little bit of situational awareness. I'm sorry. What's, he's like what's, what's 99%. What? what like what's... you're going up the S's and you have like this much of your car. Okay. Inside right. what fair. guy? Man, I, I don't know. NASCAR cup series, man. We don't fucking lift. Yeah. That's why we look like idiots every fucking week. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know this, uh, this whole, this, uh, first two races of the playoffs really shook things up. Um, that's um, what it was designed to do. It's exactly what it was designed to do. Joe Logano obviously won. Christopher Bell is up 48 or 46. I don't know. I don't have my glasses. Um, Austin Sendrick is third in fucking points. That'll last a long time. Thank God. He's plus 43. Which, who's, who on this podcast said he was going to win the title? Uh, I think all of us at some point said he was going to win the title. I don't think I did. Oh, I think man, I said Logano. Well, that was me then. I have said Logano was going to. But I yeah. think it was me that said he was going to win the title. Um, Alex Bowman's plus 41, um, which, I mean, he's just had a quietly good playoffs and nothing spectacular. He's just, he's literally done what he's done all year. And, you know, look at that. He's fourth in playoff standings and not going to lose his ride. Um, another guy that's not going to lose this ride because he's not as bad as everybody likes to make him out to be. Daniel Suarez is fifth plus 36 uh, above the cut line. You know, yeah. Round one exit, guys. Um, e or Sorry. Very well could exit round one. Any of these guys could. But easy round one exit, they, they said. Tyler Reddick plus he's 30. Wait, he's how far ahead? 43 or 36. I'm going to keep my mouth shut, but they have run really, really poorly at Bristol really before. Bristol. So, yes, that's correct. That's correct. Um, Tyler Reddick is uh, six plus 30. Chase Elliott's plus 30 as well. Ryan Blaney plus 29. Kyle Larson plus 26. William Byron plus 25. 
Briscoe, Gibbs, both plus six, and then Hamlin minus six, Brad minus 12, Truex minus 14, Harrison Burton still within striking distance, minus 20 in 16th. Um, Seth, what four miss? Uh, who were the top, the first two plus six? Uh, Briscoe and Gibbs. <laughs> Okay, them two, and then the bottom two. So Burton and whichever one. I just think that I think Hamlin's definitely going to get in. He's going to move it, move back in. They will either run, they're going to run top three, yeah. I think, at Bristol. Um, and then I think Brad's going to run good at Bristol. Yeah. Um, they they have since next gen came around. Um, and uh, yeah, I just don't think they're the other two are, I don't think Harrison Burton's going to wow us. Yeah. I'm, That's where I think we're at. I, um, I think Shurex and Burton both miss, uh, Burton for obvious reasons. Shurex, um, has also sucks, been really bad at Bristol. Sucks at Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Denny and Brad both make it. I think Ty get, I think Briscoe falls out and I think somebody Do you think Ty Gibbs makes it? Yeah, I think I think Gibbs wins. Spoiler alert. Um I think um I think someone Reddick or on back misses. I think some I think one of them has a problem and Hasn't Reddick been? Hasn't twenty two eleven and Reddick been really bad at Bristol too? Or am uh, I crazy? I I agree. I, I know Reddick wrecked in the spring, but that was when they stayed out on old tires, yeah. thinking it was yeah. yeah viable. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think that it's just how this has gone. I think that there's going to be. I mean, there's always one guy who ends up just with you know ends up wrecked or something so that's my prediction i think hamlin and brad run good enough i think ty gibbs is going to win the race um and uh i don't know i'm scared to put chase briscoe out because anytime i doubt him um or i'm sorry anytime i accurately uh uh and now analyze chase briscoe he somehow becomes a good race car driver um and by good race car driver i mean he bullies his way through the entire field driving like a bat out of hell look i'm 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 at the point where i'm here for a stupid champion because like why not yeah um it's not gonna change that, anything either way so whatever yeah. other than that uh i think that's all we got for non-important items and by not important, I mean non SVG items. So here's the rundown from Down Under. The final time on the front stretch. He comes to the checkered flag. He pulls it very All right. So the rundown from Down Under, uh, because obviously SVG played such an integral uh, role in the finish of the cup race. <laughs> Um, we have decided to go back to our old, old, uh, our old ways of doing things. And, uh, the rundown out from down under is integrated into the podcast. Um, so let's talk about that. Uh, the Xfinity race, Connor Zilich got the win. Um, he is not SVG. There's a lot of people making comparisons to him and SVG because he won in his first start. Um, I'm just going to put it out there. Ty Gibbs also won in his first Xfinity start. What is that? I mean, Ty Gibbs, great race car driver. He's three years in, hasn't won a cup race. <laughs> so, I mean, I know I, he's not the next. He's, I don't think Connor Zilch is the next coming of Jesus. Like, I don't, I, I it's just, he's another absolute, he's very talented, great prospect. I'm not on the hype train. It's, it is recency. Uh, maybe not bias isn't the right word, but just like you, it's just, it's, it's right there in front of us. So we have to blow it out of proportion. I don't know. 
Yeah. That's just my opinion um, on Connor Zilich. Um, and also SVG had a, uh, not, did, did not appear to have a very good race car on Saturday. No, it did not appear that way. Um, from what we, from what I saw, it looked like it bogged down big time going up the hill. Yeah. Uh, which is why he had three cars hitting him in the S's on that last restart. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, no amount of race graph can really overcome that. Yeah. It just is what it is. Uh, it really hurt to my hurt me because if he could have just passed Connor, then I would have won like 150 bucks. So I guess huh. I'm dumbass this week for that. Uh, so I guess it's my fault. No, I did make money this week, but of course I bet on the surefire thing, which was the Panthers losing. So, oh, okay. Um, right. well. Uh, American football. Sorry for for those of y'all. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it was very disappointing. Obviously, um, I was pretty. I said it on the rundown from down there last week that anything less than a win would be disappointing, and here we are. Um, Can I confirm? Buddy was disappointed. I was very disappointed. Um, we were at South Boston for the car store race, and um, so that saved me a little bit of disappointment. I was pretty. Pretty annoyed. Um, if I'm being if I'm being completely transparent with you all, I am kind of sick of Connor Zilich already. Um, I think he has been shoved down our throats like Taylor Swift at a Chiefs game. Um, even though I don't think that has happened, but that's the comparison I'm going to make because everyone also American too. football also American for football. the audience. Um, that's the uh, that's what everybody seems to the narrative to be. So Connor Zilich is my Taylor Swift. Um, I'm kind of just sick of him. Uh, so we'll see what happens with him. Uh, I think, yeah, um, I don't know, just the overall disappointing day in the Xfinity series. Um, I hope they are able to bring a better car for Shane at the Roval. Because um, I would like to see another SVG win in person. Uh, it's all same. It's all about me, guys. Let's be real. Not going right, to attack that comment. <laughs> all right cup race um i uh, did he exceed or meet or underachieve in the cup race in your opinion seth well considering i picked him to be a non-factor at the beginning of the season in Watkins Glen, uh, i would say he over exceeded my okay. expectations solely because again for the reasons we mentioned if you're listening to the full show if you're not listening to the full show go listen to the full show so you hear these reasons, I'm not really going to get all the way back into them. But for the reasons we uh, detailed earlier in the show, uh, Watkins Glen has become so much less of a driver track that I thought Shane's abilities weren't really going to help him too much because there's only so much you can do. Yeah. Um, and then luckily they just, it just seems like they brought a piece that was good enough. They and really it, did. And part of the reason, of yeah. And I mean, I, I'm going back to what I said preseason about about what I thought would happen here. But even in the, oh, not the oval race, the road course race that Shane has run this year, other than Chicago, which he clearly has an advantage of, it, just his driving style. Um, and who knows what the car actually, who knows what the car would have done with another driver in there. But, and and then that wasn't yeah. his fault. But Coda, where they were basically a non-factor. Um, colleague, uh, it exceeded my expectations by colleague. I mean, I guess Trackhouse builds the car. Yeah. And then, I mean, obviously, Ross won the poll. Obviously, they took a lot of data from Daniel Suarez running the tests there. And then Ross won the poll. And then they set up Shane's car to be really good. Yeah. So I'll give Trackhouse and colleague credit that they they looked good this week. They knew what they were doing. That, so. that was honestly the key for me. If colleague could bring a good piece, I thought he could at least... I thought he had things going in his favor with it being a playoff race um, that they would be on the right strategy. Um, but I mean, honestly, I mean, it wasn't, it didn't take strategy for them to be where they're at. He was obviously qualified third and ran second the entire race uh, pretty much. And then, um, yeah, almost got bit by the strategy, but was able to um, make it work. Was, you make it work. Yeah. Which was, I mean, and a lot of, and a lot of the reason it worked is because SVG is who he is and was able to make up the, the Delta needed and stay in the game. Um, even though NASCAR tried to take it from him there. And then, you know, he's running down Chris Busher. Um, 
Do you think he was going to catch Chris there at the end? Obviously, they had... Um, How many laps were left? Like 10 at that point? Uh, yeah, right. Eight, nine, I think. Nine. He was like four seconds back. I don't know. I, I think he might have caught him in the sense of maybe being half a second back. I don't think he was going to have enough time to mitigate the aero disadvantage he was going to be at. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think he was I think he was gonna run second there, to be honest. I um I was more hopeful of that than I was of the restarts, just because Shane was oh so much better than everybody else once the tires did fall off, and I think they were going to they were just getting to that sweet spot where the tires dropped off and i think that's where he would have been able to make up a chunk of time so i think he probably could have instead of a couple tenths a lap he could have started making up you know maybe half a second to seven eight tenths a lap on chris um certainly but also we're not we don't really know like chris yeah. probably wasn't pushing full bore at the end there they probably it kind of yeah. just knowing the nature of the way the cars are you probably don't push too hard there like hard yeah. enough but not yeah. so hard that you burn your shit up and yeah. i don't know yeah um and then they throw uh really a caution that i didn't think needed to be thrown for harrison burton um i i can go back and forth on that he was putting a lot of shit down yeah it was then that shit's called rubber and they had kind of been putting that down all day yes so. but uh a hot ass piece of rubber in the middle of the racing line that just came off the car. It gets on the tires, could end someone's day. I guess. I don't know. I, yeah, it's what, yeah, you're right, though. It's, you go back and forth on it. Yeah. Um, and then we had several restarts. Um, Shane made a very questionable call, in my opinion, not taking the front row on one of those restarts. Um, clearly, because it didn't work. No, it did not work. He lost the uh, second to Carson Hosevar. Um, but luckily, because it's NASCAR, he got several more restarts to try to make that up. Um, and then the final restart of the race sends her down into turn one. Um, and little, you know, just, to, I mean, just bump and run. Just as NASCAR as it can be. It's eat or be as classic eaten. NASCAR as it can be. Absolutely. Yeah. It's eat or be eaten. And he's learned this game very well since he's he's come over. And I think that was a lot of the question that we've harped on a lot is will he play the game? And all year long he's proved to us that he will. Um and takes the lead and is running away with it. Um I don't what before <laughs> Restart to before the bus stop on the last lap. What what was your what were your thoughts, Seth? I thought he won the race. Yeah. Like I don't think I entertained the idea of him missing a no, corner. I didn't either. It didn't occur to me that it could happen. No. And then he pulled a Kyle Larson. <laughs> he, what do you mean? Fucked it up. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously he goes down on the bus stop. Chris had made up a little time on him. Shout out to Chris, though. Like the fact that he hung with him that well is yeah. pretty impressive. And obviously, so if you're new around here, Chris Busher is a good road course racer in his own Very right. Good road racer. Not quite Shane Van Gisberg and not quite Kyle Larson or Chase Elliott, but a good road course racer in his own right. And he's been close at several of these before. I think the stat is now. 13 out of the last 15 road races he's finished in the top 10 yeah so which there is you go <laughs> very impressive yeah. um especially without chaotic they can get chris is a very underrated driver um he it's a shame he's not in the playoffs because he is he's honestly a guy that i think is a championship level driver in the right situation um but yeah, I, I was with you. I never, I did not entertain the thought of SVG missing a corner. Um, but I mean, it's, this shit's tough. Um, he got intimidated. He, like, I don't think that happened. I don't. He said he was in his mirror and overdrove the corner pretty much. 
Yeah. He said he got I in th- there a little too hot, got it loose, and hit the it wall. Was, uh, yeah, okay. I didn't hear him say that. I, it was a game of chicken. It was honestly a game of chicken, it seemed like, because Chris also said he went down in that corner way faster than he had all day long. Yeah, I mean, was, the fact that he went in that much harder and completely nailed it is pretty pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously Shane, I mean, just gets offline and he I still haven't I haven't been able to bring myself to watching the replay. Um so I, I don't I, yeah, I, I definitely saw it. Um he hit the wall. He yeah, he grazed the wall. Oh. He got loose and then grazed the wall and he got loose because he entered so high or so far. Yeah. But yeah, I mean essentially like I, I I pick a little bit when I say he got intimidated. That's a reference to an old NASCAR game where, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm talking to the, oh, yeah. the New Zealand audience who may not know. Um, anyway, Dale Earnhardt was called the intimidator. He'd get behind you, fill up your mirror, and people would get intimidated because Dale Earnhardt was known to move you out of the way if he held you up. So, again, I mean, essentially, it was a forced error from Busher without making any contact solely because he was still there and obviously Shane knew if he got back to him he's gonna hit him because he hit him fair game yeah um yeah I don't Austin Hill would have lost his shit <laughs> oh yeah I mean and here's the thing it's like obviously SVG I mean it's proven right there he's human um I still think he's the best in the field I mean I don't think there's any disputing that it was I think it was I mean it's like I said, this shit's tough. Um, but I think there's something. Uh, it's uh, it's there's something to be said about the fact that he can play the game, but play it better than everybody else. They're better than most as far as how how to race. And he's he went out. He was going up against the guy in Chris Busher, who also does that very well. Knows how to play the game, but also plays it better than anyone else and cleaner than anybody else. So, I mean, it was, and it, I'm sure it meant a lot to, to Chris. And I know Shane had a great time with it that, you know, Shane went up and congratulated Chris. I mean, it's just, it's two guys, you know, that as disappointed as I am, it is. I mean, that was a classic NASCAR move. I mean, it was, they bumped, they rub, they, it was how, (laughs) How far can you go before breaking? And you did. Um, well, and then like the con both. And by both breaking, sit- I don't mean physically breaking. I just mean like, yeah. Yeah. Well, like even both sets of contact chains on, on Chris and, and vice versa were. It may sound may sound um, uh, contradictory, but very respectful, really. Yeah. When you look at it. Yeah. Obviously, nothing Shane did was was gonna take Chris out of the race, and he was still gonna be second at that moment. It still was obviously, and nothing Chris did was he wasn't trying to wreck Shane. It might have no. looked worse because I think Shane tried to kind of like cover Chris it a got little into bit. Him. Chris got into him, and Shane was trying to pin him. I mean, yeah. it's it was it was very uh, it was very it was funny. It's got in the shades of. Uh, of Ambrose and Keselowski from that that one year. I mean, they it was as America hard as you finally can drive. got one back, babe. Yeah, oh, <laughs> fucking a. Um, it was as hard as you could drive, but you know, and that's the key is like if you could race. I've I've always said you race as hard as you want, make as much contact as you want, as long as it one goes both ways and two you still finish one two. I think that's it's fair game at that point. Yep. Now. Give SVG like four more feet, and I'm interested to see what happens in turn seven, because he sent that son of a bitch in there. He was completely out of control. Like, and here's the thing. He made that mistake down in the bus stop. He damn near nullified that by showing he's he's got more car control in his dick than this whole fucking field's got, because ain't a motherfucker in this field could have saved that car. There's probably a couple, but it's close. I don't know. I have not seen a next-gen car that out of shape 
and swap ins that bad and and someone save it. That is fair. Um, it looked like he was like starting his like drifting burnout thing, and I'm like, dude, you're not even in the lead. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Um. I when so Harvard retired last year. I didn't have a driver. I, I've told this story before. I'm going to tell it again. Um, and, and Suarez won Atlanta, and I knew right then and there. I was like, all right, that's my guy. It just, the way it felt, I was like, all right, that hit me. Uh, and I've said that before about Shane this year. Uh, and, yeah, it's uh, it's irrefutable. <laughs> it was pretty, it, was, it felt like, a, it felt like a, uh, you know, <laughs> it felt like the four car was back out in front there for a lap and a half. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty cool, and then um, it was robbed from me. I <laughs> it's a strong way of putting it, but well, no. <laughs> I, Ryerson, and I also had a Twitter exchange where I said, "I said if I wasn't pulling for SVG, he he nails that corner." <laughs> uh, to which Cook Virus replied, "Yep, didn't pull for him in supercars, and he won all the time. And I pull for him in NASCAR, and he fucking biffs it." Or um, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but yeah, that second sucks. Second two weeks in a row sucks even worse. Yeah, I, I got nothing to add on that one. Yeah, I don't know. Sucks. I guess we just um, giving or. Uh, yeah, it bodes well for him next year, though. It does, but um, barring unforeseen circumstances, he will not win a cup race this year. I would willing to bet. Which you don't think he's going to win Martinsville? Uh, no. Hmm. <laughs> I had him, dude. I had him ten for that one. I wish. I mean, look, I'm up for it. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, pretty gutted. I yeah, really... Spoiler alert: I also don't think he's going to win Martinsville. <laughs> Really wanted that one. Really, uh, really, really wanted that one. But darn. Um, yep. Anyway, um, I think that's it. We got all we got for the rundown from down under. Yep. Accolade time. Accolades. Um, Sundress. I am gonna ass. go with yes, and dumbass. I'm gonna go with a junior motorsports driver. Not named Connor Zilich. I'm going to go with Carson Quapple for taking three three races off in the Cars Tour and immediately going back and whooping ass. Yeah. Um, oh, I should change my dumbass set if it's going to be Cars Tour related. I'll say that. My sundress is going to be... Um... Trying to think. I mean... You know what? I'm going to give it to Austin Cendrick because he definitely had two racetracks that played into his advantage. Um, but I mean, if as much as it, the system is convoluted, you have to play the system if you want to succeed. And he has played to the system in the most Pinsky way possible. The system he, has played to he, him. He, he, well, he he put himself in position to win a race. And I mean, on raw, on raw pay, obviously he had some things go wrong, but he put himself to where if there was, uh, you know, a blunder from the, the front runners, he was there in one gateway and he's run two really, really good races. And I think it's something he said, obviously Atlanta, he survived the wrecks that didn't happen, <laughs> um, but had a fast car, but Watkins Glen, I mean, he has not been the Austin Cindric that we saw in the Xfinity series on these road courses. Um, and he drove, I think his best cup road race since they went to the next gen car yet. And, um, he, he put himself in really good position going into Bristol and, you know, some from someone we thought was going to be an easy round one exit. So, yeah, so I'm going with him. All right. Uh, I guess I got two dumbasses, and so my number one dumbass is me for betting on SVG. Sorry. Um, uh, hard. One hundred percent certain that's what caused the Saturday um, okay. result. 
And then also, I guess I have to give it to Trayton Lapsovich for giving uh, Carson Quapple the in the bottom of the, the first lane or first row at the end of the car store race. Since I'm not on the car store show, I get to get this in now. So, oh, okay. Um, dumbass. Uh, for a couple of turns there, it was going to be SCG, <laughs> but. I mean, it still could be. Like, still oh, could no, be. Like I said, he's still, he's still, he, he, I, I'm, I'm holding on to that, that incredible save down in seven or going into seven. I, I think that, you know, it was like, ah, oh, damn, he screwed up. He's human. And then, then I saw that and I was like, uh, Jerry's still out. Jerry's still out. <laughs> he's still pretty fucking good. Um, are you sure ass, about that? <laughs> dumbass. Um, I think we took a full week off from doing this, but I think we're gonna we're gonna go back to the old big motor small weight special of uh clearing of jumping across all the tables and kicking over several babies to I'm proud of take you. the low hanging fruit and give the dumbass award to Corey with Joy for wrecking half the damn field on lap one at Watkins Glen and also <laughs> managing to have his best road race ever and still not beat his team. <laughs> so Corey LaJoy, everybody. Doo doo water. Never mind. I was, I, never mind. We're not even going to go there. Um, picks. So you picks had Shane, four. so you win. I did. Oh, fucking hell. I forgot I had Shane. Damn it. That's the second fucking, that's like the second race in like three weeks that I picked the fucking winner or picked the guy who was, who'd I pick at Darlington? Uh, I don't remember who the fuck I picked it on. Somebody, no, you didn't I win the picks at Darlington, so yeah, no, I picked Ryan Blaney last week. That's what it was. Oh, okay. and he almost won. <sighs> I just want to win one of these fucking races, man. Um. Oh, so uh, pick uh Bristol. Fuck. Um, he already said it. I yeah. I'll, I'm. I, I mean, I could pick whoever the fuck I want. And that I is true. Just, but could fuck y'all up and pick Denny Hamlin. Ty Gibbs. Denny Hamlin. Okay. Chuck, who knows? I mean. Probably Kyle Larson. I'll be honest. Yeah. It's Bristol. I don't know. Um, don't take that as fact. That's just, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, especially since Kyle finished his top five at every Bristol race, but doesn't win somehow. So yeah, yep. um, Bristol. Apparently, we're gonna see what we saw in the spring. I'm uh, pressing it. X to doubt. Yes, I am. Uh, I. But again, uh, believe it when I see it. I said the Bristol spring race was gonna suck, and it didn't. So I'm gonna try that strategy again. It seems like a viable option. Yeah. Um, Even though I said that last year's Bristol race was also going to suck, and it, it it did it did suck. So yeah, we will be at Bristol. Um, yes, yes, which is so, next week, buddy. That is yes. <laughs> I yeah, I forgot that Bristol is next week. So that'll be uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> if you guys are out at Bristol and you see us, don't say hi. Don't don't say hi. We don't know. We I'm don't still actually. Gonna be, I'm still going to be sad from the last two weeks. Yeah. Man, what a fucking what? A, yeah, never mind. I'm not going to. Well, that's been the show. Like I uh, like I said earlier, we could have we could have had Suarez and SVG win back to back races. Worlds collide, and in the great words of William Byron, toes collide. Does Byron use that Snapchat filter that says send toes? That's a... Yes. Never mind. Go fuck yourself. I'm not touching that one. He's been buddy. I've been buddy. Bye, Gary. Bye.